Okay, so in this video, I'd like to talk about the axioms of pairing and union, but first I'd like to remark on the empty set axiom that I discussed in the previous video. Um, so we'll remark on axiom one, which is the empty set axiom. Uh, we denote by this the the set satisfying the empty set so just to state explicitly this is what this simple means the set found by by axiom 1 okay so now let's talk about axiom of pairing is the third axiom, axiom of pairing. The axiom of pairing formally says that for all sets X and for all sets Y, there exists a unique set A such that for all other sets Z, Z is in A, if and only if Z is in X or Z, or Z is equal to X or Z is equal to Y. Now, this is also claiming the existence of a set. So this is claiming that unordered sets exist. This is slightly different from the empty set axiom, which claim the existence of a set of the empty set. This is different because this is a way to generate new sets from old ones. So given two sets, we're able to get a new set by um, by taking the set of by taking the 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 set of both of them. So um, definition. This, this is more notation, but given given sets x and y denote by curly brackets x comma y curly bracket the set satisfying 3 this definition is given so our into uh, because because our intuition, we want this set to exist. So that's why this is stated as an axiom. Um, a remark on this is if x is equal to y in the previous definition, we write instead of x comma y, we write just the uh, curly brackets x. Now this allows us to formally define uh, an ordered pair. No. So given sets x and y, the ordered pair is defined as the set x comma y is equal to this. Now why is this different than defining it in the first video? The reason why is that, well first for this definition to even make sense, the thing that we're defining the ordered pair to be has to be a set. So in other words, this here has to be a set. So why is this a set? Well, we're given we're given x and y as sets. So that means so so then we can use pairing 
So that means that So that that means that the uh, the set x and the set x comma y are both sets. Are sets by three. But then but then these two are both sets. So we use pairing again with uh, with these two sets here to get the uh, to get this set as an actual set by um, yeah so so that means now that we know that ordered pairs actually exist in our universe okay so that um, so next we have the axiom of union. I'll state the axiom first. The axiom states that for all fancy f, I'll comment on what that means in a second, and there exists a unique a such that for all x, x is in big A if and only if, um, I'll write this underneath, there exists a y in F such that X is in Y. Okay, and then we definition given F denote by this U standing for union, union F the set um, existing by four. Okay, so to comment on why, so if you just go down, read down the line, we have really fancy letter, a capital letter, and then a lowercase letter. So this, so this is, so th they're all sets, um, but the reason why is I'm using different symbols is really for uh, a pic picture in your mind. So we have that you can think of you have X down here and then you go up the hierarchy and you get A and you go up the hierarchy again and you get fancy F. So X is supposed to just be a set. A in this context is supposed to be a set of sets and then Fancy F is supposed to be a set of set of sets. So I'll give an example of what I mean because I'm sure that sounds very confusing. So example. So let's say that F is this set here where A and, well, I'll just write. So we have A, B, and then B, C, D. Um, I think I need one more. Okay. So if you were to compute this, this turns out to be equal to this set here. And why is this true? Well, again, I'll write it again, but um, we know that x is in the union if and only if there exists a there exists a y in f such that x is in y. So the reason why A is in the union of F is because there exists a Y in F, namely this set here, the set containing A, such that A is in the set containing A. The same thing for B. And then for, for this set, the reason why this is in the union is because it's in this particular set. 
which is in F, and same thing with C comma D. So in other words, this is really just this previous example, this is really just stating union F in previous example is really just another way of writing this here. Okay, so for notation So given x and y defined by x union y, that's going to be equal to this set here, which we know exists. So this is, again, we run a, in order for this to be an actual definition or for it to make sense, this set here has to actually be a set. And the reason why it's a set is that we're given two sets x and y. We know that this set exists by pairing, and then by union, by the axiom of union, we know that this set exists as well. In the similar way, we can define, um, say, x union y union z. So you can think of this as intuitively, it's going to be this which is going to be this is this is what we'd want this to be equal to and this would just be the set here which will exist by repeating axioms of pairing and union but you could do this for any um, uh, finite union mm -hmm. for example okay so in, that's enough for, for this. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the axiom of power set. And if we have enough time, also the axiom of the comprehension schema.